Hey guys, it's Dr. Sayed here, AKA Real Skin Doctor. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking to you guys about itchy skin. For those of you who are new to the channel, I'm a doctor specializing in dermatology, and it's my goal to help you guys navigate the wild and confusing world of dermatology and skincare using some basic scientific facts. I'm gonna start by giving you a brief introduction to what itch is. Then I'm gonna be talking about the most common causes of itch that I see in my patients. And I'm gonna end the video by teaching you guys some strategies on how to deal with itchy skin. So the medical term for itch is pruritus. I don't wanna to get too far into the weeds right now, but all of these words that you see around me are actually the biochemical signaling molecules that make you feel itch. These include C fibers, histamine, bradykinin, and substance P, for example. Thankfully for you guys, a lot of you will never need to sit dermatology board exams, so you don't have to worry about memorizing all of these. But different types of itch are signaled using different combinations of each of these things. But let's focus on some of the most common triggers I see in my patients that make them feel itchy. Now I say this in nearly every one of my videos, but maintaining an effective skin barrier is the key to calm and happy skin. When skin is dry, it's more prone to getting cracked and it makes that happy skin barrier a little less happy. A common way for the skin to signal this unhappiness is through itch. The time I notice this the most in my own life is sometimes when I have to shower a lot, damn you Peloton, and I don't moisturize my face, I find that it feels really tight and dry and then it starts to become itchy almost straight away afterwards. Also when it gets to winter time here in New York and these heaters come on, they take all of the moisture out of the room and I suddenly start to feel itchy all over my body. So think about whether your itch is related to the fact that you're not using enough moisturizer. The next most common cause of itch that I see in my patients is a combination of irritants or allergens. They sound like the same thing, but they're actually a little bit different. Irritants are substances which are in and of themselves irritating. They have that effect on anyone who's exposed to them, even if it's the first time you're ever meeting them. For example, if anybody gets cleaning bleach onto their hands, they will notice that it starts to feel prickly and irritating pretty soon afterwards. Now, an allergen is something that is specific to each person, and it requires what is called a sensitizing event. The first time your body is exposed to this allergen, it creates an immune response to it, which means that the next time it touches your skin, suddenly the immune system will go into overdrive and cause irritation and redness. Those reactions vary from person to person. So for example, your friend may be allergic to fragrance and a perfume, but you may have absolutely no response to spraying it on your skin. In either case, being exposed to an irritant or an allergen is an incredibly common cause of itch in my dermatology patients. And getting to the bottom of what exactly is causing your itch requires you to become a little bit of a detective. If you notice yourself being really itchy in the last few weeks all of a sudden, it's time to get your Sherlock Holmes on. And yeah, I couldn't find the Sherlock Holmes theme tune, so I just hummed it into the microphone right here. I hope that's okay. So you need to think to yourself, have I started anything new? Let me retrace the steps in my regular day-to-day -day life. Could it be the new hand wash? What about the shampoo? That new scented deodorant. I knew it was too good to be true. Is it your dish soap? The detergent? How about that new perfume? New underwear that I bought in the Black Friday sale? How could you do this to me? The leather jacket that seemed like a good idea at the time but really wasn't? Or maybe the new shoes? Yes, even shoes can be the cause of an allergy. Now this can be a little bit overwhelming, but what can help is to think about which exact areas of your body may be red and irritated and itchy, and this can give you a clue about what type of exposures occur in those specific areas and nowhere else. Now a really common one we see in clinic is people having red, itchy hands, and most often that is related to wearing gloves if they're in a the healthcare sector, or being exposed to cleaning products or washing their hands extensively. Nowadays with coronavirus, the amount of hand itchiness has increased exponentially because people are using so much sanitizer and cleaning products on their hands. Alternatively, some of my patients have itchiness and redness that is the most noticeable around their waist, and it actually corresponds with where their clothes are the tightest. Now that can either be a sign that they're allergic to the elastic in their underwear, for example, but it can also be a sign that the detergent they're using is causing the allergy and the itchiness all over their body, but in these specific areas, there's the closest contact between the detergent and the skin because the clothes are tight. Listen, it was Thanksgiving two days ago, and there's no shame in admitting that those clothes are feeling a little bit tighter than usual. So the key to treating this type of itchiness is identifying the trigger and then removing it from your life. Now, if it's not obvious which product you might be allergic to, one strategy I use with my patients is I recommend they swap all of their skincare and products they apply to their body to Vanny Cream. I've talked about Vanny Cream in one of my other videos, but specifically it is fantastic for people who have sensitive skin and it has no fragrances or preservatives involved, which means that you can use it on your skin trusting that it's very, very unlikely to cause any kind of allergic response. Now, a bunch of medical conditions can actually also cause itch. Most commonly, these involve your kidney, your gallbladder, your liver, your thyroid gland, or even your blood itself. If you happen to know you have a problem with one of these organs, then it's worth asking your doctor whether or not they think your itch could be related to that. But in the majority of otherwise healthy people, it's really rare for a problem in one of these organs to present itself only with itchiness of the body. So don't get too paranoid thinking that you secretly have liver problems if you're a 20 year old who's feeling a little bit itchy. Again, certain medications are known to be causes of itch in some of our patients. These 
include some blood pressure medications and if you know you're taking a bunch of different medicines, it's a good idea to speak to your doctor and ask them whether any one of those are known to be associated with itch. Bug bites, the one thing nobody really wants to think about, but if you're feeling intensely itchy with no clear other trigger, and especially if you notice little red bumps throughout your body, you may well be having a little bug bite problem. We call the whole family of bugs arthropods, and this means that it could be bed bugs, oh god no, mosquito bites, or even scabies, which are these little mites that can live on our skin. Is anyone else feeling really itchy all of a sudden? Now a clue that there might be an arthropod related problem is to think about whether or not you've been anywhere wooded or to the beach recently walking around barefoot, whether you know for a fact that you were bitten by mosquitoes, that's a bit of a giveaway, or if your close contacts, meaning other people at home, people you share a bed with, if they also have this intense itchiness, then you might want to start thinking, could we be dealing with a bug problem? I'm going to do a whole video talking about the different treatments of itch at some point in the future, but very briefly I'm going to give you guys some strategies that you might find useful at home. Firstly, buying creams like CeraVe for example can be fantastic as a moisturizer and it can help repair that skin protective barrier that will minimize itch. It's also especially effective to keep these products in a fridge when you're not using them, so that when you feel that itchiness and you put it on, you also get the cool relief of having a low temperature product on your skin. There are also some over-the-counter anti-allergy or anti-itch tablets which can be helpful for some people's itchiness. But more than anything, I recommend trying to see your local dermatologist as soon as you can because they can do a full workup including a clinical history, a physical exam to see which areas are the most affected, maybe order blood work if it's necessary to rule out any kind of internal organ problems, or even consider arranging a patch test to try and find out if you can identify a specific allergen that's affecting you. We can also prescribe certain stronger anti-itch tablets if they're clinically indicated and give a topical steroid cream, ointment or lotion that can help symptomatically get rid of the itch. If you guys enjoyed this video or I guess it's pretty hard to enjoy a video about itchiness because you're probably just scratching yourself the entire time. If you guys found this video useful at least, please support the channel by hitting the subscribe button below. I think everybody should get more familiar with the largest organ in their bodies. I'm talking about your skin guys. So it's my mission to make the followers on my channel experts on their own skin with each new video I add weekly. I hope you'll join me on that journey. Thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.